We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and our stop today is Fort Worth, Texas. We get to visit with Coach Joe Prudhomme from the Texas Wesleyan Rams in his seventh season with the program. Last season, Coach, was a great season for the Rams. Nine and two overall, seven and two in Sooner Athletic Conference play. You get a share of the conference title as well. That's the first time that's happened. Let's start right there and and look back at 22. Yeah, it was a great season for us. I mean, we did a lot of – a lot of good things. Our, our offense was really, really strong. Defense was a great takeaway defense. Uh, special teams were really, I mean, it's just borderline spectacular. We had 12 two-point conversions. I think that led the nation. Um, we blocked like seven or eight punts, seven, um, I guess, special teams touchdowns. And then the, the offense, I think, were 45 points is what we scored a game. It was a great season for us. Um, you know, we let one get away here at home against Ottawa. Of course, they're just so tough to beat. We haven't been able to do it yet, and that's that's a real big goal for us. And then we go out to Louisiana Christian after the uh, Langston win, which was a huge win for us because we hadn't beaten them before. And then we kind of stub our toe, but they really – they came out and played really well and and we just didn't meet their challenge but no it was, it was a great it was a great year for us we were happy with it um sure would like to have been in the playoffs but it didn't work out and and you know i think good things are ahead for us well coach i agree with you i think you did everything that you could to be in the in a position to be in the playoffs and with the expanded playoff opportunities for 2023 who knows what's going to happen but uh, i also wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about the spring how are things looking right now it was the best spring we've had here, uh, probably by far. We got a lot of good work done. Uh, it was it was competitive. It was physical. Um, we didn't lose. We lost one kid, which was unfortunate. Lost one lineman, um, but he was a backup guy. But he was still going to be a piece of what we had going forward. But outside of that, it was a, a really good competition at quarterback. Uh, we were able to kind of smooth some things out that last year we felt like weren't quite where they needed to be. Um, so we've, uh, it was, it was as good a spring as we've had and all our, our felt the same way. I mean, it was truly productive. The offense won half the time, defense won half the time, special teams, you know, kept getting sharper. So it was, it was the best and most productive spring we've had. And, um, I'm looking for some guys to step up. Well, coach, let's, let's start with someone who did step up last season in a big time way. Ernest Caesar in the backfield, 1100 plus yards rushing 14 touchdowns last year. Just a fantastic season. Ernest was, Ernest was special. I mean, he was, he burst onto the scene, kind of surprised us a little bit. I mean, he, he was okay over the summer. He was okay uh, in camp, but boy, when we the lights came on and we started playing, he was just, he was a game breaker. I mean, he averaged over nine yards of carry, uh, just, just really, really solid. Just a threat. Great vision. Good patience. Um, excellent burst. What he does so well is he changes direction and changes his speeds so well. He'll be. He has like three gears that he that he uses when he's running, and it just makes it tough for him to get a good solid hit on him. And you know, he was he was real good out of the backfield as well as far as a receiver. He uh, Ernest has a chance to be really good again this year. You were talking about competition in the quarterback spot. I know Dalton Dale had led the way for quite a while there. Unfortunately, had an injury near the end of the season last year. Carson Rogers came in. He has some competition this season as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, Carson Rogers and uh, Cole Francis really competed heavily in the spring. Um, it was it was back and forth for the most part. Cole probably nudged ahead a little bit, and then this summer Carson's kind of taken it back from him. So it's been an excellent uh, competition. We also have Colin Johnson, who's a freshman we signed out of Pearland Austin. He was the back to back uh, offensive MVP of that district down there, and he's in the mix as well. We we're going to try to go with the old guys, maybe redshirt Colin if we can, uh, but it's in good hands. All, all quarterback, all four of them are or better. Uh, they all have great vision. They have good arms. They're smart. Um, we're, we're looking looking forward to some real production out of that spot. That has to feel nice having that kind of depth in that particular position. Oh, yeah. I mean, that <laughs> everything's about the quarterback. I mean, it, it, you can say whatever you want in any league, anywhere. That you're, you have to have solid quarterback play or real good quarterback play to give yourself a chance. If you don't, then you're going to be, you have to be great in every other spot. So we feel good about that. That's uh they're smart. They've been working hard, getting it. Um, it. The game is starting to slow down a little bit for them, so that's that's encouraging. 
even with the players with the skills that you've just mentioned, to be able to produce well, they have to have a strong offensive line. Tell us a little bit about your offensive line. We have four of the five starters back from last year, so we're excited about that. There's a lot of experience on that line. Um, we have a couple of guys, young guys that are stepping up that look really good. Uh, you know, Michael Bonner was, I think, all American team. He was all conference. Uh, he's going to come back. He's a guard. Our center, Peter Savota, has been with us for a while. He'll be a three year starter. Uh, right tackle, Mikey uh, Williams, it will be a four year starter. Bonner will be a four year starter. Um, and then we got Christian Myhan, who was a tackle. He's uh, he'd be a two year starter coming back for his third year of starting. But so there's a lot of experience there. Uh, we have um, Ogden Morrison who's coming in. He's he's probably the most athletic of them. He's really strong, really powerful. Uh, then we got um, uh, we got Cedric Malone as well. So there's there's competition at every spot. Cannon Thomas is a guard. He had a great uh, spring. Really really improved. So that the offensive line we feel good about tight ends we feel good about you know we have um all kinds of guys at tight end that, that have been looking good we got chase nielsen we got cam chapman who's back who was second team all conference he looks great uh so we feel good about about the line and the and the you know the different h back we have caleb mckinney's a kid coming back he'll be starting for the second year cam will be a three-year starter it's it's very experienced offense we're visiting now with Coach Joe Perdome here on Midwest Sports Net. I encourage you, please continue to watch these videos. We're enjoying previewing the 23 college football season here on the channel. Uh, Coach, you look on the defensive side of the ball and and uh, just tell us tell us about that defense. Kobe Adams coming back, 21 tackles for loss last season, six and a half sacks, and really found his way into opponents' backfields. Yeah, Kobe's really good. Uh, Kobe's experienced. Um, he's a very good athlete. You know, he's played linebacker. He's played – DN, we've played him inside. He's just he's just a really, really good football player. He's very smart at what he does. Um, you know, he was all conference last year. We got Sir Hill coming back. Sir Hill was really had a great year. He's explosive off the edge. He's a he's kind of a rush defensive end. Also, we have Archie Williams coming back. He'll be a two year starter at defensive end. We got uh, Daniel Ibogan, who uh, played last year as a freshman. He was really, really uh, solid for us. Um, also a really great student. I think he's a 3.8. And then we have a couple of uh, young nose guards coming in. And then we've got Arian Bott, who's a uh, grad transfer that's going to play inside. We got uh, Bonilla coming back, who is a one of our linebackers. Um, and then we have uh, we have some other guys that are going to play. And then we've got Joe Thomas, who's played there before. He's all pl played on the end. He's played at linebacker. we got Nate Gamble, a freshman that we're really high on, that we think's got a really uh, high ceiling. Um, we have sincere Blackman, one of our corners, our six, three corners. That's he's, uh, he's come a long way, really looking good. Dalen Rogers at the uh, free safety spot. He backed up Elijah. He got about three or four games last year, did a great job with them. And then Jamarian Reed is kind of a strong safety. Uh, he'll also play off the ball back deep. He'll play up. You know, he's, he was number two in the nation in the high jump. He jumped uh, six ten, So wow. he is athletic. Uh, you know, Javar, Javar Sanders played some at nickel, so he'll be somebody we're going to be really counting on. He's got a lot of experience as well, and it's a pretty salty defense. Uh, there's a lot of speed on it. Um, they really, there's enough experience. There's inexperience in a few spots, but they're very, very athletic, very twitchy, and they can all run. So I'm, I feel good about our defense. I like that descriptive term, Coach, twitchy. That's that's great. I'll <laughs> going to use that. <laughs> we use it very much. Matter of fact, if we don't, if any kid's not twitchy on defense, we typically won't recruit them very heavily. If they can't run, they're not quick, they're not explosive. It's tough because if you make a mistake, if you take one step the wrong direction, you better be athletic to enough to go ahead and make up for it. And that's, that's where the twitchiness comes in. Okay. I understand that. I'll, I'll give you credit for it, but I'm going to use that. that. That's a, that's a great line. Coach, you were mentioning special teams at the beginning and, and what it meant to last season's team and somebody who's returning it. a big part of that. Jason Price, first team, all American uh, able to do many things for you on special teams. Oh, he's awesome. He's, he's a great returner. Uh, he's, he has a lot of different gears as well. I mean, he'll be cruising right along, then he'll burst and then he'll just slow it back down and then he'll, you know, see something. And he has such great vision in the return game. Um, he wasn't even going to be our return at first. It was AJ Bob and AJ Bob, we thought was going to be better, but he pulled a hamstring. 
Um, and then on came Jason and, you know, he was, he was just outstanding. So we got Bob, we had him, uh, Michael Banks has transferred in, uh, from McPherson. He, the, um, all conference runner up there. So, you know, we've got some pretty good guys that are going to have a chance to return the ball. Um, uh, plus we like to go block punts. Um, you know, we like to put a lot of pressure on the runner. So Jason doesn't get a lot of blocking. He just has to, to figure it out, you know, on the run and he has, um, and we like to do our two point conversion plays and things of that nature. And, you know, we, we feel like teams are where you, you're going to win some games you're not supposed to. And, and that's something that we put a lot of stock, a lot of emphasis on. And, and again, that term twitchy, if, if we, we take a lot of time in trying to figure out the personnel we want on the punt block, punt return, every special team, we spend quite a bit of time on the personnel piece to make sure we're getting the best athletic guys we can out there at that time, whether they're a starter or not. It's just, it's something we feel like can give us a big edge in the, in the field possession game. And, you know, it's, is or field position game and it's just something we've we were really good at last year we got to get better at it even more so this year less than a month and a half from the first game on the schedule and you have a, a solid schedule it should be an interesting year for you all four of the first five games are at home so that's nice so fans get to come out to farrington field to get to, to watch you all play but you begin play on august 26th against john melvin from louisiana coming in and then september 2nd there's that matchup with ottawa again right off the bat you get a chance to take on the spirit and and try to get that elusive first win uh, against that incredibly tough ottawa program on the road at north american over in houston and then back to back home games september 16th you have oklahoma panhandle and then st thomas coming in from florida strong program there that should be a great intersectional matchup i know i've talked about the first half of the schedule but i mean these are some big games right off the bat we didn't even get to the second half and some of those strong teams you play in the sooner athletic conference in the later part of the season we got to come out of the gate i mean that's something we've talked about you know from january till now is that we have to come out of the gate strong we we have to be prepared there is no there's very little margin for error in any of those games that you just mentioned. And, you know, Ottawa, we, we just haven't been able to get, get past them. I mean, it's come down to the last play two of the last three years. Um, almost three of the last four contests has come down to the last play. Uh, but we just have to, we have to get over that hump and figure out a way to beat them. Uh, and you're going to have to beat them because you're not going to, they're not going to get, they're not going to lay down. They're not going to do stupid things. They are very well coached. They, you have to take the game from them. You can't just expect them to give it to you. Uh, you know, then John Melvin's a new program. North Americans had a really strong recruiting class. You know, then uh, OPSU's always, always strong. They got a new coach of staff, so that's going to be interesting. And then St. Thomas, we're, that's going to be a real measuring stick for us. If, can we really play on the national stage with a program that finished number 11 in the nation? Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, we got to work it out for us. There's no question. And then we got to hopefully get a good reset, go down and, and, and finish strong in the second half. But we can't, we can't not be ready for that first half. Well, I can't, you know, our kids, I can't stress to them enough. We have to come out of the gate. We have to be ready. We have to be sharp. There's no early season jitters. There's no, oh, we made mistakes. We have to be on top of our game. And if we are, I, I feel good about it. If we're not, it's going to be a struggle. So uh, it's going to boil down to, who makes less mistakes and and who's more ready to play all right coach camp right around the corner then so it should be a lot of fun and you talked about the competition that's going to be there for the rams this year coach joe perdome from texas wesleyan thank you very much sir for taking time with us today here as we talk about the 23 football season and we enjoyed following you all we have for a while here on the channel we'll continue to do it this fall thank you sir excellent thank you joey i appreciate it thank you